Hey, this is Ben. Worst is bike shop. Winter time fun here. We're we're gonna overhaul a coaster brake hub. This is this is the style of a rear wheel that you pedal forward to go and you pedal backward to stop. This is one of my favorite ways to ride a bike. Because your bike is nice and simple, it doesn't have a whole bunch of handbrake and cables and stuff. You just have Pedal forward to go, pedal backward to stop. So cool. And also one of my coolest, one of my favorite jobs to do in the in the shop is to overhaul the coaster brake hub. So this is something that's real easy that you could probably do at home if you have a couple of the essential tools, which are these. A 17 millimeter open end box end wrench, or even an adjustable uh, crescent wrench. But most essential is what they call a cone wrench. This will be a 15 millimeter. The thing that makes this necessary is how narrow, how thin it is here. Because we can see, if, if the camera can zoom in way on these, these little nuts here, we can see where there's a, one nut for the 17 millimeter wrench here on the top, and the second nut underneath. They call that the cone, and we'll see why in a minute. But the, the flats for that cone wrench, the cone nut there are so narrow that you gotta have this skinny little wrench to fit in there at the same time as your other wrench. So, so we took this wheel out of the bike. Of course, it would have axle nuts to attach it to the frame, and it would have had this coaster brake arm over here, also essentially like tied up to the frame. So that part uh, we'll, we'll leave to each individual uh, home mechanic. That's not terribly complicated. But we're going to start by taking this thing apart. And we're going to go from the, the drive side here. Oh, that was locked tight. So we, we hold the cone still and then, and then loosen the lock nut. And they call it a lock nut because it's there to lock itself into place against the cone. I'm gonna take this thing all the way out here. And really all we're gonna do is take everything apart, clean it up, and then put it back together with some new grease. So this is the cone, and this is why it's called a cone, because it is shaped like a cone. And what it's doing is it's lowering itself down into this bearing allowing the bearing to spin freely side to side, but not have any any uh, side to side play. So now that we've got the cone and the lock nut off, we can take off this whole driver here. And it has this big coarse thread that threads itself down into the, into the clutch of the hub. And what this thing is doing is when the cone is held in place and this cog turns backward, which is your braking action, it's actually spreading inside of that hub these, these two little pieces of metal that basically are acting as your brake pads. And they, they rub against the inside of the, of the hub shell and that's what stops the wheel and that's what stops the bike. So now we just lift the whole wheel right off and we see here, inside here, we can see our one single bearing where it rests into that race there. And then we can see on the other side, it's, it's, a, it's a wider opening. And of course, that's a bearing race too. And we'll see all that in a little better detail after we clean it up. We can set that down. And here we have these brake pads, and these are what when, when that cog turns backward, these are what s get spread outward. They get pushed outward and they, will, and they basically just cause enough friction on the inside of that hub shell to bring your whole bike to a stop. It's kind of crazy. That's your brake pad. And this is the part that has the coarse thread, of course, that your driver threads into. And look at that, somebody's um, threading or what looks like maybe fishing line even. 
And then there at the very bottom is our last bearing and, and more of the, the clutch mechanism. That's what these two little tabs here are going to fall into those two openings. And this is all shaped so that when we go to put this all back together, we'll see how those fall into place and then the brake pads fit around into these little indentations here. So we're going to leave this side, the non-drive side, we're going to leave this all basically just assembled just as it is. That way we have saved the, the spacing from either end of the axle so that we have the same amount of space on, on either end. This is good and locked up and we're going to, when we get this all cleaned, we're going to go back and make sure that this is tight and secure so that we can just rebuild and readjust the hub from the other side completely. So we just do a quick little clean up. We got all the, all the gross hair and stuff out of there. And all I use here is just some basic cheap degreaser kind of stuff. This we're using LA is totally awesome. It comes from, um, just about every like dollar store, big lots, um, etc. kind of kind of place, but just a little a little bit of degreaser and a little kind of wipe down. It sure doesn't have to be spotless. You're not eating dinner off of this thing. You just want to kind of get like the major stuff, the 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 hair and the fishing line and you know a lot of the grime and stuff out of there because it's some of the dirt that gets in there can be real gritty and that can be pretty hard on your bearings and your races. So we'll kind of just get everything a little bit cleaned up into this bearing race even though that one is pretty dry when we open that up. And we'll clean up these brake pads. It still just amazes me though every time I take one of these apart and put it back together that that is what stops you. And this thing. And we can even take apart this clutch. There's this little washer inside of it and that big spring. That's kind of what is doing a lot of the work. Keeping you safe. Keeping you going and stopping. So we drop our washer in and we send our spring and stuff in there. Clean up these bearings. Now a coaster brake hub has three bearings. There are these two larger ones. These are uh, 3 16 inch bearing times what, seven of them in here? Eight of them. Okay. So it's these two and then the one I dropped on the floor. And this small one and this is, this is the last one. The first one we see when we take it apart and the last one we see when we put it all back together. And it's this bearing that all the adjustment happens right on top of this bearing. So. so firstly, when we put it back together, we want to make sure that this nut on the non-drive side and the coaster brake arm are really well locked up together. And a little trick that I learned from one of my predecessors who taught me a lot of stuff, Matt, is to hold the nut in place and give this thing a good whack counterclockwise while you're holding the nut and that is going to ensure that this arm is tightened up into the nut but undeniably that is tight so we'll flip this back around and start it over Something like this thing isn't essential. This is a, called an axle vise. It's not 
strictly speaking necessary, but it is sure handy. And there are um, different uh, flavors of this kind of a tool that are a little more affordable to the home mechanic that are specifically for doing this and really can make the job easier. Not 100% necessary, but... Now we're gonna get going with the grease. So first we plug back in our clutch here. And now we're gonna get our brake, oops, one more thing. We gotta put a bearing in here. Now the rule with the bearing is always that you want your open side of the retainer bearing. This side is retainer closed, this side is ball open. We want the ball side of the retainer bearing to be facing up into the cup or into the race. And so, oops, we can clean this part of the race off. So that ball part of that bearing is going to end up fitting into this race here. So we want ball up. Now we'll drop our clutch in. And now we'll squeeze a little grease all up in the situation. But especially we want it here where our brake pads need to kind of stick into place. Now we have this little shelf on the brake pad here and we want it to be oriented where that shelf fits itself right into the, in the, the, the shape of the, the clutch there where you can kind of see it, it wants to go and that one opposite. And we use the grease here kind of as glue to, to just sort of stick everything into place. There is no too much grease but we, we, there's no need to waste it either. So that's plenty what we got going on in there. And now we do the fun step of dropping this hub shell down over the hub components that we got built up in there. Just give this thing a quick little wipe out. It's looking pretty good, pretty clean. So we're gonna take this thing and just place it right onto here. So gingerly. Okay. And we're all the way on there. Now uh, a little more grease. And don't forget, now the second bearing. ball side into the race, into the cup, and lastly, the clutch, the driver into the clutch. And finally, just another little shot of grease for the, our last bearing, and again, ball side into the race, and then we just send our cone back onto it, all nice and clean. And we'll get it to, oh, where it will stop turning by hand anyway. And we'll put this thing back down on here, the lock nut. Okay, and now final adjustments. Number one rule with adjusting bearings, we want as smooth as possible with no play. So. I can still turn this cone farther and farther in if I wanted to do damage, but we can feel, we got a feel for where it's, it's really given some resistance and we can kind of even, we, we, from experience, you know, we, we just know we're going to come back from, from that point where it's given some real resistance. What I like to do is actually hold my lock nut pretty much still and, and use the cone wrench to lock the two together by basically turning the cone wrench out counterclockwise up sort of like what we did on the opposite side we're going to turn the lower of the two nuts counterclockwise to lock these two together and we're going to just keep feeling for some play in this thing and i don't feel it yet so i'm going to loosen now our lock nut our, our lock nut first and then our cone just slightly 
again, locking it up into the lock nut, basically incrementally opening up this hub until we find a little tick of play in it, which now I'm feeling, and we can even see it a little bit there. Now we got a little play in it, so that's cool. We found where, we found our limit, essentially. So we're gonna loosen again just slightly, and now we're gonna just oh so gradually tighten, turn clockwise in the cone a little bit, just a, an eighth of a turn or so, and now we're gonna lock the lock nut back onto it. And we're gonna feel for play at, of course, at a few different places around. And that's feeling pretty good, spinning pretty nice. We're going and we're stopping. And with coaster brake always, we can see, we can kind of see when, when an adjustment is too tight or when there is wear, like pitting or, or impressions having been made into the races. Um, you can see that when you spin it and the cog kind of does a little dance. It kind of just does a little dance like that. It's a compromise that you have to make. There's, it's, this is bearings, smooth as possible with no play really is, there's one rule in there and that's no play. Smooth as possible is, 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 a, is a moving target. So we got a nice spin out of it. The cog is dancing a little, but that's because of damage in the, in the that's just minute pitting and, and impressions were made in the races, but no play. We're going forward to, pedaling forward to go. We're pedaling backwards to stop. There it is, coaster brake hub. You can do this. <laughs>